Hello, welcome to my YouTube channel. My name is Thomas, and I discuss my near-death experience, the things I learned, and the things I think you should know. So there's a lot going on in the physical and energetic worlds out there, and I thought that I should check in with you. So while the news has been selling their stories through fear-mongering, I've actually witnessed something else going on in the world. I'm one of the few young people that is susceptible to the coronavirus, but I can't help but notice the positive things happening in the world today. There are nations coming together to combat COVID-19 as a species separated by borders, laws, and race, all coming together with a common interest, saving lives and preserving way of life. We should celebrate this and look to ways we can further unite. So fear, health concerns, and isolation are all part of my experience on a daily basis, but so is hope, inspiration, and faith. I feel like the world is just finally joining the club. So how do we deal with fear? This is something each person must reconcile on their own, but I can tell you how I deal with fear, and I guarantee it has nothing to do with buying a truckload of toilet paper. There are several layers of fear before you break down and have to put your fear in the hands of the Lord, and I hope you don't or haven't experienced the worst type of fear, but if you have, we'll cover that too. Fear, real fear, is something you struggle with on a minute-by-minute -minute basis. It's not something you conquer, but that you tolerate as your world gets very small. This is the type of fear that brings you to the Lord or that conquers you. If you are dealing with this type of fear, know that my heart goes out to you and that there are several ways that you can deal with it that I practice every day. You can deal with it ineffectively with substances, but when you use substances, your problems are still waiting for you when they wear off, and they often compound your problems. I'm not going to lie and say that substances won't heal your fear, at least in the moment, but they will wear off. So what's next? Well, you have to change your biochemical makeup in a healthy fashion. Dialectical behavioral therapy teaches the TIP skill, which stands for temperature, intense exercise, and paced breathing. So get in a hot shower or emerge your face in ice water. Work out, but do whatever you are physically capable of, plus 10%. If you deal with health issues like me and you can't exercise, at least not without great pain, you can practice paced breathing. And this is what the Navy SEALs do, so trust me when I say it works. Once you've changed your biochemistry, it is time to take your power back and escape the moment-to-moment -moment escapade of fear. There are several ways you can take back the moment, or enter the moment, and the first I'm going to talk about can turn fear into an ecstatic, euphoric, awakening moment. For me, this technique has often led to profound moments of awakening that cannot exist without the fear, as they are flip sides of the same coin, as one cannot exist without the other. Mindfulness meditation is how I have turned fear into euphoria on several occasions. This is setting your fear aside to enter the moment by being completely aware of the moment. There are several ways you can accomplish this, mindfully breathing or focusing solely on your breathing. The next way is a little more fun, and that is mindfully eating. In fact, I've had a huge awakening moment just by focusing all five senses on awareness of eating an egg. The next method is prayer. You can have profound awakening moments just through prayer. And by prayer, I mean what the Gospel according to Thomas suggests, and that is prayer with emotion. So you feel as if your prayer has already been answered. If you're praying for peace, feel the, the peace as if you already have it. General fear is the next type of fear and the form of fear that applies to most people when it comes to the coronavirus. You're afraid of what might happen in the future, but your needs are met in the current moment. When this type of fear enters the mind, it can lead to irrational behavior, such as rushing out to buy a lifetime supply of toilet paper. You may think that you are making a rational decision when you're doing anything but. And that's really okay as long as you don't let the fear go any further than that. 
by TP if it makes you feel better, but we all know that fear is insidious. Sometimes making one fear-based irrational decision leads to worse fear-based decisions and behaviors as it quickly spirals out of control. So how do you make good, decision, good decisions when fear has reared its ugly head? To make good decisions that are not based on fear, you have to connect with your center. And what do I mean by this? You have to slow your heart rate, lower your blood pressure, and enter an alpha brainwave pattern. If you do the previous, the latter two will happen automatically. There are a myriad of ways that you can enter an alpha brainwave state. Normally we are asleep when we are in an alpha brainwave pattern, otherwise we are daydreaming or enter alpha in sporadic occasions throughout the day. The best way to ensure that we stay awake to make our decisions while in alpha is to meditate. If you are doing it correctly, you may still fall asleep to start with, but through repetition and practice, you'll be able to enter alpha at will. That's not to say that you can't immediately make better decisions by centering yourself now. The quickest way that you can center yourself is through focusing completely on your breath. And the best way to accomplish that is to put on a guided breathing exercise, whether it is paced breathing or analoma veloma, which is altered nostril breathing. Having something guided, at least to start, will help your unfocused mind tune into the task at hand. And this is crucial because it will help your brain go from its task-oriented beta brainwave pattern to a slower, low beta wave pattern, which is the doorway to alpha. You will know that you are entering alpha and going to your center because when you are finished with your practice, you will feel a little groggy, like you've just awakened from a night of refreshing sleep. Isolation is another challenge faced by many people during this coronavirus outbreak, and it is something that I've dealt with for half my life due to my health issues. Since I was 18, I've been completely or compromised immune. I've had a compromised immune system, and I've had to worry about something as small as the cold killing me. Dealing with the stem cell disease and acute leukemia has meant that I don't have a social life and that alone has led to extreme isolation. The coronavirus will pass, so your isolation will, will be for a finite amount of time, but my isolation is something I have to strive to overcome. So how do I cope with my isolation? Well, isolation can be extremely challenging and like fear, it can lead to some irrational behaviors and bad decisions. There are things you can do to minimize the effects isolation has on you. If isolation has created fear for you, you will want to treat the fear by going to your center through meditative techniques. Otherwise, I suggest you try to take advantage of the time you have to yourself. Do activities that you may have let go by the wayside in favor of work, school, and social activities. Read, write, reflect, meditate, and pray. You can take advantage of the alone time to deepen your spiritual practices. Practicing prayer, meditation, and journaling will not only help you feel like you're being productive, but it will also help you feel calm and centered, which will help you make better decisions. It will also help you be the best version of yourself that you can be. If you are doing a lot of spiritual work and self-reflection, you will need to balance that work with some rest and relaxation. Meditation, prayer, and reflection can be very draining. So I like to uh, strike a balance between work and play by zoning out with a movie or TV show on Netflix. I find TV and video games are an effective way of shutting down my brain, allowing me to relax. In fact, we enter a meditative state when we zone out in front of the TV. And some of my most profound realizations have come to me just while I was watching TV. The stress of fear and isolation has a negative impact upon the immune system, so it is important to set aside time to not worry you should consider this time sacred. Even if it's just for an hour a day, you should tell yourself that you are going to keep your thoughts positive and that you are not going to worry for a designated period of time. 
This might be a good time to take a walk or get out to nature. It is important to break up your day by getting outside. Telling yourself that you are not going to worry while you take a walk is a great way to improve your mood while also getting some oxygen to your brain and it will help you feel rejuvenated and like a new person. If we stop moving and lock ourselves indoors while we binge watch Netflix, we will become depressed and even more stressed out. Self-care is also very important during times of heightened stress, fear, and isolation. Eating healthy, taking vitamins, showering, and getting a healthy amount of sleep can all go by the wayside during times of elevated stress. It's so easy to gorge yourselves on unhealthy snacks before falling asleep in front of the TV. Cooking yourself a healthy meal is a great way to distract yourself from your worries while also nourishing your body and mind. Most of our body's serotonin comes from the digestive system, so loading up on probiotics can be a great way of supporting our mood while also enhancing our immune function. If your diet is not the healthiest, at least take a well-rounded multivitamin. Drink lots of water and herbal teas to stay hydrated and to keep your skin, vascular, and nervous systems functioning at their best. The first thing that I was shown during my near-death experience was a view of Earth from outer space, and I could see all the souls that were leaving the planet at the same time as me. I felt such compassion for humanity as a species, and I felt even more bonded to the people here than I had at any point during my life. The coronavirus has reminded me how, as a species, we are all in this together. We should function as such, and I see us working together as a global community to solve the coronavirus epidemic. We should allow positivity and love to shine through these trying times. Think not only of the self, but of your neighbors and of mankind as a whole. I encourage you to take gentle care of yourself as you face new challenges, but also look out for your neighbors. Reach out to them to see if there is anything you can do for them. We shouldn't fear each other while we fight the coronavirus, but rather have compassion for others. All right, I will leave you with that. I hope it has been helpful somehow. If you have any questions about how to practice mindfulness or are interested in other ways you can deal with fear or isolation, please leave a comment and let me know below. Please do not suffer alone. I wish you nothing but the best. Much love and light. Namaste.